and I should be live. Um, so I got stuck at work today, and I didn't get to go play Magic. Oh, and now I have. <laughs> so anyway, just ignore my mom. That's what she said to do. So. So, since I didn't get to play Magic in paper and in person, um, let's play some Arena Cube, I guess? You know, just to, just to play some Magic. Um, so, let's see. Traditional is the best of three, right? That's what I accidentally did the other day. Um, yeah, this is the, this is the normal best of one. So, I guess we'll switch back over to that. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. I uh, just ate. <coughs> okay. I think I'm done. Alright. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and do a best of one. And... Yeah. We did do better in the other queues. But... Part of the reason for that is our round one opponent did not seem to have a particularly good deck and maybe was a bit new to Magic or not as invested in the game yet. So, so we kind of, you know, I just got to sit there and hold on to all of my removal forever while I waited for just the right moment to do anything. All right. So, Tegrid was fine yesterday. This one is... Uh, one it attacks, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. Whenever one or more cards are put into exile from your library and or graveyard, put a 1-1 one, one counter on her, and she's a 2-2 two, two haste for 3. Uh, there's a couple decent burn spells. What is her actual thing again? Um, specializes seek a non-land permanent card with mana value 3 or less. Um, under a duplicate card, random, I do not have time to read every single one of her. She is pretty strong, or at least she was in, um, in the Baldur's Gate Alchemy set. I don't know if I just want to try Layla, though. Lelia, um, she's from one of the Commander decks. I forget which one, I think it was Strixhaven. <clears throat> she seems like... And we got past to Fairy, Hero of Dominaria, which makes me really sad I didn't take Layla just so I would have another white card, but... There's also Halana and Elena, who are absurdly powerful if you don't um, get them killed immediately. Uh, they just keep buffing your creatures, and if they ever gain any extra power... Uh, I think it's going to be one of those two. The question is, do I want to, like, stick to my guns with Layla, or do I want to take a, like, higher raw power level into Fairy? I think I'm going to take the higher power level. It's still early in the draft, and somebody didn't want to Fairy, Sorry, so. <clears throat> is that even possible to Fairy? Can you be late? Alright, well, I have an excruciatingly high opinion of this card, and that... Despite how badly I did in the other draft, that has not wavered, and Discover the Formula is just very consistently potent. <clears throat> Six mana guarantee you get three spells, and they all have their casting cost reduced by one. Um, I have two non-creatures already. I'm inclined to take the Shark Typhoon. Uh, we have Mana Tithe, we have Castle Vantress is fine. Either of these two creatures would be okay. Uh, Tameshi, we need more stuff going on than just Tameshi himself. So I think I'm going to take the Shark Typhoon. I do have to be careful. The red removal was not particularly impressive, and there's not a ton of, like, high-end removal that I saw when drafting the past couple times, so. Uh, if we run into a deck with large creatures, and we're not 
advancing our board state towards a you know winning game position, then we're probably going to get run over. Like we'll very easily be put on the back foot by like uh, Elder Gargaroth or something. <clears throat> so I do have to watch out for that. Elspeth now. Uh, I don't think I want Stormcaller. Uh, Heliod is fine, not amazing. We do need creatures for Elspeth, though. Like, unlike Teferi, who just is a very potent planeswalker that just sits there accumulating value, um, Elspeth does need creatures for her plus one. <coughs> <coughs> Oh, excuse me. And her minus three needs, like, cheaper permanents, which so far we have one of in a color that we're not even likely to play at this point. <clears throat> um, we could take Seagate Stormcaller instead, but <clears throat> we don't have any of the spells for him. So. Her? I forget what's in, what's, uh, Stormgate... Sea caller, Seagate Storm caller, Seagate Storm caller is uh, Ojutai's command. Uh, target creature with mana value two or less, uh, gain four life. Counter target creature spell and draw a card. Um, all very good. <clears throat> um, counterpoint, Vorin Clex when we have two planeswalkers uh, makes. Five three three angels and get an emblem whenever I draw a card. Exile target permanent and opponent controls. <clears throat> uh, there's also a colossal sky turtle. I feel like the controlling aspects of the other decks were like just didn't work out as well as I wanted them to. Uh, Sune's Intervention, one or more, make two two twos, non-land permanent with mana value three or less, destroy target artifact, destroy target enchantment, and gain three life. <clears throat> I did not see a lot of artifact and enchantment hate in this set, uh, in this cube, but I did see a lot of powerful artifacts and enchantments. Um, so instead of taking one of the green dual lands, I'm going to take a way to destroy powerful artifacts and enchantments <clears throat> and see if that continues to be a trend. Uh, Suspicious Stowaway. Um, I would love to have it have Indestructible off of Elspeth. Um, <clears throat> hmm. So now we have Pillar Flame and Royal Eruption both wield as removal spells. But there's also a Safekeeping and I kind of think I want to try the Vorinclex with Planeswalkers. If we can get that going. <clears throat> also, the Planeswalkers are non-creature spells for the Shark Typhoon, which then, you know, makes tokens, you know, make a 5-5 token to block on behalf of Elspeth or Teferi. <clears throat> Gives them a little extra layer of protection. <clears throat> yeah, I did just eat, and now I'm going to talk a whole lot. So now my throat's going to be like, why would you ever do that? Why would you think this was a good idea? And I'm going to be like, throw, I don't know. It's like, you, you know we were like horribly ill because of the kidney stone earlier this week, right? <clears throat> uh, it has to be specifically an instant or sorcery for Poppet Stitcher. Um, we could take Rishkar as a ramp spell. Also don't mind buffing Suspicious Stowaway. Uh, I would take, like, any white, blue, or green land here, if there was one. <clears throat> uh, Charter Course, Supreme Will, Mind Flare. I'm feeling Charter Course. Hopefully we can get some more creatures we can attack with. <clears throat> off my drink. Alright, let's see what we get. 
Oh, there's a pack. And it has the Amalgam and Tameshi. Uh, Tameshi is artifacts and enchantments, and right now we have Shark Typhoon, I think is our only artifact or enchantment. Uh, we can take the Amalgam. <clears throat> it's a decent sized flying creature with flash, and if we get to the point where we can exploit something with it, like reasonably, maybe we have to cast it and exploit it to itself to counter a spell. <clears throat> Um, all of these are okay. I think I'm going to take Mass Vandal. Again, I saw a lot of powerful artifacts and enchantments in this format, and not a lot of ways to deal with them. I think I would like the spell effect of Sky Turtle over the additional large hasty body of Uvenwald, but... And Robo Rabbit goes to the sideboard. <clears throat> uh, we have a Gear Hulk... We also have Tamio. Um, so let's see. If she starts off at three, because she would lose two loyalty for the completed aspect of her, then we can't ultimate her, so we would need to cast her for five with Vorinclex in play. Although, if we have Vorinclex in play, we should still have five mana. Uh, Birth of Miletus would be fine. Breeding Pool. I even take Elvish Visionary at this point. Uh, but I think I will take another <coughs> powerful Planeswalker. Maybe we can actually build a very fun Super Friends deck. Uh, Fading Hope, Champion of Wits. I think I'm going to take Paradise Druid, though. <coughs> and run with that. Sorry, Cathar Commando. Okay, maybe there were more Disenchant effects. I just wasn't in the right colors for either Artifact or Enchantment removal. Like, there just isn't a lot of good artifact removal in red or something. Or I was running afoul of enchantments, because I was blue-red, I think, the first draft that I tried to do with this format. Or maybe it was the first official draft. I did try to draft the format once, and I had audio issues or connectivity issues or both at the time. <clears throat> so I wound up not bothering to post that one. Uh, Gideon Blackblade, Jenga Taxis. Uh, there's also a Cultivate, which I'm inclined to take. I want to be able to cast all of these colorful spells that I have over here. Jin, very powerful, although we don't really have the artifacts, enchantment. No, he doesn't even care about enchantments. It's artifacts, instants, and sorceries. So we have, like, Discover the Formula and Intervention that would be really powerful with him. Yeah, I have to believe that he's not going to wheel. Uh, neither is, you know, March or Skyclave Apparition, most likely. But I want to be able to cast my spells. That's always... <sighs> Elvish Mystic would be great. Thragtusk would be fine. Cosmos Elixir does a lot more work than I would have expected initially. <clears throat> but the actual perfect triome for our deck... Um, so far we have Mass Vandal is okay, Rishkar's Super Medium, Overcharged Amalgam, Flicker's not going to do anything. Yeah, we don't have, a, like, any really good Flicker targets for that yet. I think we're just going to take Pilgrim's Eye. It fixes our mana early, and then we can sacrifice it to other things. There's Pact of Negation... God Pharaoh's Gift, Elite Spellbinder, Timeless Witness. I feel like it's either Timeless Witness or Apollo over here. Maybe it's Apollo? He didn't have it. Okay. I didn't think they'd eroded him, but I thought for a half second I saw like the arena symbol next to his name. And I was very concerned that he had a rattle on him. Um, so blue, black, red isn't helping. White, black, green, though, is white and green. Um, we don't really have creature removal yet, and we're starting to build up some early creatures, but this does require a go-wide setup in order to do anything with it. It does take away the creature's ability, though, which can also be relevant. I think we're going to take Adatha Trium, though. 
we get Baral's expertise? What do we have that's four, that's less than four? Oh no, four or less. So we've got Amalgam, Pilgrim's Eye, Rishkar, Spellbinder, Druid, Vandal, Stowaway, and Charter Course. So far, seems acceptable. We wield Torrential Gear Hulk, but we also wield Breeding Pool. And I really want Breeding Pool. I want to be able to cast all these cool spells we've got. It is a Torrential Gear Hulk. Yeah, if this were one, if this were like Bark Channel or whatever it was, I think I could pass Breeding. I think I could pass the land. Um, Valorous Stance. Actually, how white are we now? It's just Elspeth and Sune's Intervention and Paulo. Maybe we're not even that white, so maybe Fading Hope. <clears throat> well, there's... I am amazed Jingataxis is still here. I'm going to take him, but that doesn't diminish my amazement. Can we get Elishnorn, too? Like, is she in this thing? Can I just have all the Praetors in my colors? That'd be awesome. I'll take that. We got Thrag Tusk. Oh, wow. Okay, well, green and blue seem to be doing really well here. Um, we have a lot of good top-end cards. I'm going to take the ramp spell over the extra card draw. <coughs> uh, we do not have good blink targets yet. We did pick up Elite Spellbinder. All right, we'll, I was going to say, we'll take it and we'll see. Ooh, and we picked up Timeless Witness now. All right, Teleportation Circle looks a little better. <clears throat> teleportation Circle looks a lot better if we wind up taking, like, you know, one of these top-end white creatures. Make a bunch of dudes. We can put a bunch of count. Oh, that only works on the ones that are convoked. I was thinking this was a different one. There's also the Restoration of Igonjo. Uh, there's also Sad Robot. Sad Robot fixes our colors, ramps us, draws us a card, is a good blink target. <clears throat> yeah, I like all of these. I think I'm going to take Sad Robot, though. There's also a Wilt. Yeah, I guess there was just not a lot of of the other colors, and green just has a ton. I got thrown off for a second. I forgot we had taken Elvish Mystic. I'm like, what are you doing here? <clears throat> How are you here? Uh, this is white-blue. Um, hmm. Yeah, Layla's not going to make it. Do I just want another ramp creature? I forget how many Wraths are in the uh, in this set. Uh, I know there's Day of Judgment, and um, I think uh, either Sweltering Suns or Anger of the Gods is in. Oh, right, there's Chandra. <clears throat> Chandra is a ridiculous bomb. How ridiculous is she? Uh, I'm probably not running Usher. Uh, as worried as I am about Wraths, I'm worried because we're going to lose, like, a bunch of 1-1s that we're using to ramp, so I don't think we'll have Unbreakable Formation mana. Hydra's okay. Chandra, this Chandra is absurdly powerful, though. I don't know that we're going to run her. Get out of my way. Um, get here. yeah, I didn't get the blue-red, like, the white-blue-red Triome before, so I'm probably not going to run her, but... Alright, that kills a whole lot of things, and I don't have a ton of interaction for creatures especially. Other than playing my own creatures early. <clears throat> okay, this one... Turn it to its owner's hand, reveal the top four cards of your library. You may put a land from among them onto the battlefield, tap with the rest in your graveyard. Green, green, double X, discard him, return X target non-legendary cards from your graveyard to your hand. We also have Timeless Witness and um, the Colossal Sky Turtle. 
so as far as inevitability goes, if we take Shigeki, <clears throat> uh, we just can infinitely recycle everything. Uh, assuming, that, of course, that we don't just die. Yeah, there's Sweltering Suns. Okay, so that one is in. Uh, this is Arena Liar, right, where I can only cast on my turn. Uh, enters the battlefield, exile up to one target creature. Its controller seeks a creature card. <clears throat> that is a really good thing to blink, because eventually your opponent will just run out of stuff if the creatures they're seeking don't have the comes into play abilities necessary to, dis to disrupt what you're doing. Alright, real quick, what's my... So this is, uh, blue, green, red. Okay. Um, don't really want Arcane Bombardment. What's our instant sorcery count for the kitten? Uh, five instants, three sorceries. Not great. Uh, I think we're gonna fix mana then. Yeah, I don't think we're going to run Chandra. The thing about the Chandra that we have is it's her uptick that's actually what's really dumb about her. Like, she just starts upticking and then we just win, basically. Uh, if the opponent can't kill us fast enough. Um, top four cards of your library, reveal a creature or a land. Or we could take Beasts Overgrown Farmland. Alright, so the other Trium did not wheel. Our two drops include Shigeki, Vandal, Stowaway, um, and we can get a Plains with it. Is it a Basic Plains? It is a Basic Plains. Um, but I don't think we're casting any of these other cards, so down it comes. don't think he's going to make it into the deck. Oh, hey, we wield, like, everything. Like, literally everything. From this pack. Uh, but we didn't get the other one, so we only have, like, two red sources. Um, then maybe I want the big Hydra. Oh, adversary? No. Hills Reflection? Maybe. I don't think we want this one. Like, it's okay. I don't think we want Gale's Reflection either, though, is the issue. Uh, I think White's the Splash, so... And we can activate this thing. So we're going to take the Stormwing Entity. Although, it's probably not going to do anything in the deck. And Arcane Bombardment. Alright, so let's see what I've actually got to work with. We have a ton of fixing. Um, as long as we... Like, I don't think we would have had enough fixing for double red on Chandra. Unless we had gotten, like, the Steam Vents and the other Triome back. So that way we had, like, four dual lands with red. Or four... Yeah. Four, like, dual slash tri lands with red. Uh, might have done it, but... And then, you know, run a mountain or two. Alright. So, our sideboard is full of the cards that we literally cannot play with what we're doing. So now we need to cut 12 cards. Alright. T, colon. That's not a colon. Colons are down here. Creature. Alright. So, let's see... number of lands you control enters the battlefield for a land and put it onto the battlefield tapped. Orenclex, Jin, Colossus, or Colossal Sky Turtle. Maybe we need to lose a bunch of the white cards. Uh, we lose out on Elspeth and her fi her 15 power worth of flying creatures. Um, with, as an interaction with Vorinclex, so that just leaves us with Vivian, 
Uh, plus two, plus two, Vigilance, Trample, and Indestructible is okay. Uh, Tamio's Notebook is potent, and Teferi... Oh, right, we're going to be running Teferi regardless. So if we lost Elspeth, uh, Sune's Intervention, which still kind of feels wrong to get rid of, even at this point. I'm trying to cut white. All right, so we have two Mana Dorks early on. Uh, we cut the Charming Prince. Cut the Restoration. <sighs> Probably cut Paulo also. Um, sad thing is, I guess we leave Fateful Absence because it's one of my few ways to interact with creatures without just trying to outmuscle them. Yeah, adversary's not doing much. I do like the sew away though. Looting early on and then getting to do the other things. Um <clears throat> Alright, maybe we're not blinking stuff. Like we have a couple of decent blink targets, but they're also fine by themselves. Um, I think we cut the Elspeth. <clears throat> I think we just go with the three, uh, remaining walkers. Uh, Stormwing Entity. <clears throat> eh, probably don't need him either. Hydra's decent, but I think we have enough top end with these three. Cut the Intervention. Uh, that brings our planes count down dramatically. <clears throat> um, I have two triumphs that make white. And then three planes. We might not even need three planes. Uh, right now we're just running the Polymorphist and Teferi and Fateful Absence. <clears throat> like, I think the third planes is there because Fateful Absence is a two drop. Um... Maybe we have enough, like, creature base ramp. We have three early creatures we can cast. Four, five, six that can ramp us. Maybe we don't need Cultivate then. <clears throat> I'm hesitant to cut the early interaction, but I also don't want to cut... Uh, Shark Typhoon is still good, even if we just cycle it for a giant creature, but it's starting to feel more like that's what we're going to be doing with it. We have too many big creatures now, and not enough spells, so our things that we would have five, like, four or five drops, and one six drop, uh, and then, like, some twos and ones to make sharks with. So Shark Typhoon is better at that point just to cycle it for the token, which is still very good. Like, that's one of the things about Shark Typhoon, is that it is very good at both modes on it, <clears throat> to the point where I might still want the card, even if I'm never going to cast it. You know, just three mana make a 1-1 one, one flyer at instant speed, draw a card. And the fact that it can do more than that just kind of pushes it further. <sighs> we need two more cuts. What are our two more cuts? If we cut Polymorphist, um, our interaction for creatures is down to Fateful Absence, um, like Tempo Plays, and that's it. Maybe we do cut the white. We cut the Faithful Absence. We cut the Polymorphist. <clears throat> that doesn't allow us to deal with opposing creatures, like opposing utility creatures very well. Um, but it does ease up the mana requirements a little more. Um, so we have these two. 
that can search. Uh, this one taps for any color. <clears throat> and our only white spell is Teferi now. Hey, right, let's give it a try. See if I've horribly, horribly underestimated this cube again in what is and is not viable. Still have the volume coming out of my computer. Oh well, that's fine. Um, real quick, let me pull up this. Okay, there's my microphone icon. I just want to make sure I'm actually have audio after previous problems. All right. Um, we are going to keep this. We have fading hope and solemn. To start off with. Should be able to get to our top end sooner. Oh, good. There's Rishkar. Um, of course it is. The downside to Rishkar is that we did not draw any of our two drops yet. So, Rishkar will be a 3-3 three, three mana dork for three, which is acceptable. Um, I think we're going to slow our opponent down. Down, sir. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six mana? Okay, sure. Let's draw Boring Plex. Let's just draw our Boring Plex. That's true, he's up to two creatures, so... I could have chosen zero if I really did not want to counter on him, for whatever reason. So, will they kill our Rishkar, or will they replay... Ah, neither. They will play a 2-3 that will let them draw a card later on. Alright. Uh, take action. Um, well, we already have a white mana source, so I'm going to get another island. <coughs> and attack for three, because they're not blocking. Yeah, they were never blocking anyway, so it didn't really matter that we play Psalm Simulacrum first. And now if they just try to... Oh, they're going to play a Dancing Scimitar. Right, because it would cost more. Now they get to draw a card. And oh no, we've taken two damage. Whatever shall we, Vorinclex? Pivot Vorinclex for a little bit until we get a way to remove it. Hmm. Alright, so one, two, three, four, five, six. This thing is seven. Target creature. Hmm. So yeah, if we cast Timeless Witness, we could. Oh no, we can't bounce her. We'd have to. We can bounce her, but we have to tap Rishkar to do it. Um. Okay. Let's play the Triome. <clears throat> yeah. Alright, let's cast her and get back the Fading Hope but not actually use it to bounce and deal two damage to them yet. <clears throat> we can still use Fading Hope here to bounce one of our creatures, including the Timeless Witness, if I wanted to get super cute about it. Alright, that's another 
flyer and it's buffing up their other creatures. Uh, let's see if they bother to make it huge. Nope, they're going with the little guys. Hey. We can basically kill one of those and scry one here if we want to. Let's see who they want to attack with first. I think I'm okay soaking the damage and drawing an extra card here. Alright. Alright. <clears throat> um, yeah. I would like Tamio once we have this uh, Colossal Sky Turtle down. Yep, should have played the planes. Didn't mean to tap my 3-3 there. That's okay. Also, because it's a planes, we don't even get to cast the Mystic. Uh, they still do- ah, blah. They do still have a 5-power First Striker. For the time being. And there's Luminarc Aspirant. Yep, yeah, nope, everything's awful forever. Everything is super awful forever. What pile of keywords does she have? Vigilance, Trample, Lifelink, Indestructible, Haste. And now the thing that they target with the Angel Fire Ignition from their graveyard will also have extra counters and a ton of keywords. Wow. Yep, nope, we're just getting wrecked now. So everything that we were going to do has been rendered irrelevant by these large creatures because we do not have a wide enough board and we are not growing our things. And we don't have a wrath. So we are missing every key piece of interaction that would actually allow us to do anything here. Uh, they are at 18, because they just gained 8 life. <sighs> yeah, I think we can go ahead and pack it up. I don't even think, yeah. Like, the Angel Fire Ignition is just going to make whichever flyer we don't lock down huge and trampling anyway. Or, does the Angel Fire Ignition give flying? Was that a thing? Ah, I think it does, Angel Fire, after all. Like, she already had First Strike, but, yeah. I don't know, I'm so used to cubes where you just draft a whole lot of value cards and, like, mid-range plays, and that tends to win, and I have not been doing well with that strategy at all with this format so far. Like, I did a few drafts with the, um... I think it's called the Tinker's Cube, and I only, I had only just started streaming when I did my first draft for that one that's actually recorded, but yeah, we crushed it, and that was with me being distracted by, you know, trying to talk the entire time. Alright. Yeah, that opponent just dealt with our, uh, Vorinclex, and then by the time we drew anything else relevant... They had an insane board position that we could not overcome and we had no way to interact with. Um, so maybe I'm just drafting this format horribly, horribly wrong. Which is always depressing. Uh, cubes a bit less so, like actual standard legal sets when I can't figure out what I'm supposed to be doing with them feel a lot worse because they're a lot simpler. And the idea that I'm struggling at all with them is kind of super annoying. Oh, cool. Uh, no, I think we need to... We're going to need to ramp very soon. So 
The problem is, is that's going to give haste to every one of their other aggressive creatures. Yeah, I think we're just taking one for right now. Hmm. Might just eat Robo Rabbit if it comes in for a third bite. And if the overcharged amalgam dies, that's fine. We have Timeless Witness. <clears throat> oh, hey, there's Legion War Boss. Do I not have double blue? This is in Dafa Triome. I do not have double blue. Cool. I thought this was the other one. Well, that's awful. Uh, especially since Teferi goes to one. Wow. Yep, nope, everything is terrible. Alright, we're gonna play another mana dork. And pass. <clears throat> I'm assuming Legion War Boss is now going to pick up Robo Rabbit and attack me for three by itself so it can keep growing the other goblin tokens that my opponent's gonna be making, but maybe they just have something. Obviously, you know, I drafted an aggro deck, and I immediately ran into Elder Gargaroth and just got absolutely stomped for having the audacity to play uh, Legion War Boss. Like, how dare I? <clears throat> um, now, now my opponent plays Legion War Boss against my green deck with a bunch of ramp, and I do nothing. I just let it happen. Good times. Oh, so we can buff up the Amalgam? Yep, nope, everything is terrible forever. Literally everything is terrible forever. That That is my board state right now. And has been for a while. So this is 6, 7, 8, cuts me in half. The Amalgam's only going to trade with one of these. And then I'm going to take... Yeah, I'm just dead, aren't I? Like, this is just awful. Everything is awful, and I am going to die. Uh... New plan, I guess? Although this new plan doesn't even work, because we won't be able to draw a card in time to kill the Phoenix, to exile the Phoenix with Teferi. Like, they just have to pump the Phoenix and attack me twice, and I die. Mm -hmm. Wait, did they not pump one of these guys? What happened? I am so confused. So I'm taking three, four, five, six, seven, going to one. Yeah. Cool. Um, assuming they pump, which I'm assuming they're going to. I don't know why they wouldn't. Yep. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm just super dead. Like, maximum dead. Oh, we don't even kill the Ash Phoenix anymore. Yeah, no, this is just game over. I am going to lose this game. Um, technically, they shouldn't have even equipped Robo Rabbit. Like, I'm way more dead without them equipping, but that's okay. I'm I'm dead regardless. So, how I'm dead no longer matters. All right. Well, this is what we do now. This is, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's going to get us killed. 
Um. Wait, can she kill a creature with flying? Oh, right! I forgot, Vorinclex hates stories. There is no story time with Vorinclex. Um, Ash Phoenix would just come back. Oh, no, they only have one card in the graveyard. It can't come back. Uh, so yeah, we get to slam Vivian here and minus three her. Um, still no attacks. Okay. That's a problem. That land is a huge problem for us. Uh, because it will make, you know, another creature that we can't deal with. Um, yeah, the land makes two creatures. The land is a huge problem. Uh, I only have one mana left over after this. <sighs> okay, let's see what we get then. <sighs> Can't if we destroy the ogre head helm, that's not going to help us. All right, we need bodies. The wilds are my shield. <sighs> A lot of those spells would have been super helpful here. So if we cast her, we get back Lalmore Elves, or actually I guess, oh no, oh yeah, we have to, we can get back the other two one, yeah, I guess we had to kill the Ogre Head Helm, but there were other things we could have potentially drawn at least, alright, well, all our opponent has to do is read their own cards and we die. So let's see if they read. Or Chandra. You don't have to read when Chandra's around. Yep. Hey, remember how good I said that Chandra was? Yeah, that's how good that Chandra is. That Chandra just killed us just by casting her. Like, didn't even have to resolve. And she's at like half her loyalty too. So, yeah. Alright, so we have no wins. This is going to be another 03. This is definitely going to be another 03. Like, I do not understand this format, apparently. Like, what whatever I draft does not work. <laughs> no matter what color combination I'm in, or which cards I prioritize, I cannot seem to, you know, actually win games of Magic. So, that's an issue. Like, I'm doing worse with this than I was with the stupid Baldur's Gate alchemy. And that's alchemy. Like, alchemy's just terrible. I do not like alchemy to begin with, so... Um... I guess we're going to save our mass vandal to destroy one of the incredibly dumb artifacts or enchantments that's in this set. In this format, rather. So our opponent won't have any of those. They're just going to have, like, a creature ramp deck, but, you know... Listen, I'm obviously wrong about everything in this format, because I can't win a game, so... Against anybody who's playing remotely well, competently, uh, I guess we're getting our planes for our Teferi later on, because, you know, at least I can do that part correctly, like, you know, my own decision-making process for in the middle of playing the game, since I can't draft correctly. I mean, there's no reason to block. Like, if they have a pump spell, I just take damage. And if they don't have a pump spell... Ah, ninjutsu. I forgot, like... I forgot that there was a green ninja in this set. I think I played with this guy, too, and I still forgot he was here. Okay. See? No, I'm terrible. Don't... I can't even play the game properly. Like, the, the regular part of the game. Yep, nope. I mean, I'm not chump blocking the 3 3 right now. Am I? No. So, I guess we're getting in for one. I can make a 2 2. 
can draw a card, but that seems bad. Yeah, no, I genuinely forgot that idiot was in this set, so I could have blocked the O2, and I don't think they would have had anything. I genuinely thought it was a bluff. I forgot there was this green ninja. Like, I don't remember seeing uh, Kappa Tech Wrecker or um, the other one The like that would actually be in this cube, the Springleaf, whatever, the 6-5. So I'm just thinking, why, why would they bother attacking unless they were trying to bluff kill my 1-1? One, one? I genuinely forgot this idiot was in the set. It's also an alchemy card, so, you know. Alchemy cards have no purchase in my brain past when they come out. Um, oh, hey, there's Rishkar. Which card will allow my guys to tap for mana? And make the shark a 3 3. Hmm. Can block with Rishkar and bounce him back with the turtle to put two more counters on my flyers, but I don't know that I can pressure the opponent fast enough to actually, you know, get ahead of all of the extra cards they've gotten this way. Three, four, five, six, seven. I could also not do that and just cast the Sky Turtle next turn. They do have black, though, so the odds of them having a way to kill this thing seem pretty high. Especially since they've seeked, what, two non land cards so far? They're gonna have to discard the hand size now if they don't cast anything. Yeah, all they need is, like, a decent counterspell or, like, a, ch like, cheap enough. Oh, hey, there's Garrick. Um, yep. Leave me be and you'll escape with your life. Leave me. I hope I'm not ruining your little camping trip. I'll leave your bones in my wake. Mm. So we could bounce both of their creatures. Three, four, five, six, seven. Oh no, wait, we can't. We have to play an island. Okay, we have to play an island first. Or we can hit them for five and bounce Rishkar. And then replay him next turn. Put it onto the battlefield. What does he have that has reach? Anything? Death Touch, Uprising, Basic Land, Four Greater, Trample... Gain four life is obnoxious for trying to race. Uh, the Scurred Colony. Scurred Colony is what has reach. <sighs> okay. So, we're going to bounce those two and my Rishkar. Uh, replay Rishkar. And we're going to kill Garrick before he gets a Reach Creature in our way. I've got better friends in the wilds, anyway. 
So next turn, assuming that they don't kill our creatures. Oh, hey, it's Elder Gargaroth. Um, yep, okay. So... So that's Elder Gargaroth. And Elder Gargaroth is, as always, a problem. Hey. Right. Well, maybe they won't feel like they can attack with Elder Gargaroth with the 6 5 flyer there. Like, even if, well, obviously I have to block because it has Vigilance. Yeah, so maybe they just won't attack with it so that I don't trade with it, and then they have it back to hold off my entire flying army. I have 13 points in the air. We just need a little bit to push through all the lethal damage. I'm still not holding out hope. Like, Elder Gargaroth is terrible for us. We have so little interaction. And then I cut what, what little interaction we had in white because I didn't like having to run all three colors at full volume, so. Make my mana base a little less shaky. We just took the two white cards, that, or one white card, right? It's just a fairy. Well, they might be about to punch my whale and give the Elder Gargoyle... Yep, yeah, there it is! Primal Might! And they left the two open. Well, I was gonna say, are you attacking? Because I think I am pot committed at 11 to killing Elder Gargaroth here. So, 3, 4, 5. And keep my 4, 4 flyer. Well, all of that was awful. Um, And they still have the Liberator, so if I let anything through... That's going to sucker punch me. Alright, let's play Vivian and see what we get. How this thing goes, I've seen things that would break someone like you. Um let's keep going, big creatures. And in the meantime, let's play a two one to force them to have to activate Incubation Druid, I guess. Yeah, Charter Course is going to be okay to copy, not amazing. Ulamog. Okay. Sure. Is a new beginning. I, I have exactly nothing that interacts with that. Okay, so this is an 3 Um... Why can I not block? Oh, he was tapped for mana. It's just that thing that's attacking us. Um, sure, go to two. Like, what's the difference between two and zero with Ulamog in play? Is it nothing? I'm pretty sure it's nothing. Yep, yeah, okay, we're done. Well, that was horrible. Like, wow, I am terrible. Like, actually actively terrible at drafting this format. I cannot draft this format to win a game. Like... Save my life, forget that. I cannot win a game. This is two 0 and 3s and like a 1 and 3 in the like best of one bracket. Like, this has just been abysmal. Alright. Sure, let's see what three amazing cards my performance earned me. Yep, nope, that, that's those are the cards I deserve. Actually, Shark to Crab's too good. Uh, and Karlov is decent and limited. He's a 7-drop, but for what he was, like, for sealed, you could usually cast Kazarov. Uh, sorry, not Karlov, Kazarov. And get away with him as, like, your top end in sealed. So, yeah, these cards are too good for how well I'm doing. Um, well... You know, I don't want to cherry-pick my drafts, but I also feel like if I keep posting drafts like this, uh, nobody's going to watch me because I suck. And, oops, I hit Arena instead of OBS. Hey, right. maybe I'll give this one more shot, see if I can do better. So I'm going to 
end the stream here and restart and maybe go for one more. See if I can actually win games of Magic. You know, just to be different. Just to try something new. Alright, well, see you in the next one.